Velvet Remedy and Calamity had taken their leave. Velvet mentioned something about dragging a poor Pegasus buck to the spa. Homage, Zenith, and I were left alone in the room with a huge alicorn water fountain. As physically exhausted and emotionally gutted and achingly horny as I was, I could not seek attention for my needs until others had been met first. First came getting Zenith set up in the emergency broadcast station. Zenith's eyes went even wider when she took in the walls of monitor screens, many still flickering and suffering distorted images, but I saw all of them were working. This is amazing, the zebra breathed. What is this place? Homage told her, adding, the images that you see are from the spire towers, like the one in Philadelphia. Just over three days ago, the ones from Philadelphia were dark. Red Eye is using that tower for something, and it was keeping me from getting a signal. But, thanks to little Pip, DJ Pwn3 now has eyes in the heart of slaver territory, too. How much gave Zenith a sympathetic and hopeful smile? We'll finally be able to start doing some real good out there. The zebra nodded. For the next hour, Homage instructed the zebra in the camera controls and accessing the archives. Zenith took to it with difficulty. In the meantime, I mostly just watched. In Homage's home, I felt very safe. I was no longer on edge, no longer running or fighting, and my body kept trying to fall asleep. I did, however, managed to get a promise of muffins from both of them. Fitzy Doo would soon be getting the biggest and best muffin delivery in the history of the equestrian wasteland. Then, finally, Homage and I were alone together in the foyer, standing next to the fountain. And what shall I do with you, my wasteland heroine? Homage purred. First, I mean. Homage, I said reluctantly. We need to talk. Oh my, sounds serious. I nodded. Falling to my haunches, I began to talk. I started with the truth about Steel Hooves and Chief Grimstar, apologizing profusely for not having told her sooner. How much his expression was troubled, but forgiving. Then I told her of Red Eyes and the Mega Spell. We have to evacuate the tower now, I said finally, quickly and stealthily. I can't leave Ten Pony Tower, Homage said, shaking her head. I know they have you surrounded, but maybe with the Sky Bandit, or through the tunnels? I fretted. It can't be impossible. Homage shook her head again. No. Some of the population, maybe. But even then, I can't leave here. We can't let Red Eye take this place. I know DJ Pwn3 is important, but he's not as important as your life. She couldn't understand that, of course. But I had seen the gardens of Equestria. I knew. Then, you seriously underestimate the need for a voice of truth and hope in this ruined world, Homage told me. DJ Pwn3 gives the ponies of the Equestrian Wasteland the warnings and advice they need to survive. But more than that, he gives them the comfort and the hope they need to make surviving worthwhile. I looked away and nodded, feeling ashamed. She was right. And, while I would say that DJ Pwn3 is the most vital thing we need to preserve and protect here, he's not the only treasure in this tower. I looked up in surprise. This was new. How much brushed my hair tenderly, even as she, her own blue mane fell into her eyes? Little Pip, love she said, that word shooting thrills through me, igniting desires and dreams. Ten Pony Tower was a predominant hub for the Ministry of Arcane Sciences. It was not a hotel or a mall. There are secrets here. Secrets? I asked. That damned curiosity pony in my head perked at the mere idea. What sort of secrets? I could tell Homage was debating whether or not to tell me, but only for a moment. Little Pip, do you ever wonder how I could stay here 
DJ Pwn3 is public assistant. Will the stuffy lot in this place desire him so? I had to question the answer, but it never occurred to me to ask. There is a secret society within Tenpony Tower. They are the ones who, I dare say, are really in charge. She backed up and looked around. There are places in this building that are sealed off from the general public. Places where the Ministry's secrets played out. All manner of magical research and development. She looked at me, tossing her hair out of her eyes. You know that annoying shield spell the Alicorns have? It was developed here. I found myself looking at the age-darkened bronze statue, the alicorn in the room. And you haven't seen how powerful that spell can be if you pump enough power into it, Hamish told me. And the only reason the alicorn shield can be punched through with the right firepower is because they can't manifest it anywhere near its full power. Actually, I said, remembering the supercharged alicorn with the Philadelphia crater flying through the building. Her shield tearing apart walls and supports. I think I have. Homage bade me to tell her about it, and once I was done, she nodded, visibly shaken. I think you're right, she admitted. Homage continued. In the weeks before the end, one of the other hubs in the Ministry of Arcane Science cracked some sort of subspell that they used to enhance the shield's uh, shield spell. She continued. Not make it more powerful, but make it so that specifically designed ponies could pass through a shield, as if it were not there. They started creating enchanted shield generators, placing them inside rooms or sections of buildings that they wanted to secure. With that, Homage hopped up onto the fountain's rim and tapped right forehoof, rhythmatically, on the alicorn statue. I gasped as the horn flared with magic, and the glowing aura of a magical shield swept over the walls. The MAS, EBS, and Twilight's Anatheum are amongst Tempony's Tower's sealed areas, she said with a smile. To the population below, DJ Pwn3 has always been a strange hermit living in a part of the tower that no pony can get to always dealing from the outside world through intermediaries. My jaw dropped. Once started, the only way to turn off the shield was from the inside. The only ponies who could get inside were those designed or designated by the subspell. Vice pass spells, I said, slowly reclosing my jaw. How much gave me a quizzical look? The subspell, it's called a bypass. Twilight Sparkle reverse-engineered it from a zebra enchantment. Like the stealth bucks, I thought. Shield screens, the less specific material, through them. Damn it. Damn it. I was going to have to kill the goddess for Red Eye after all. Not only was it the only way to protect Homage and the ponies of Tenpony Tower, it was the only way to keep him from taking too close a look at this place. Could we move all the ponies to the tower, into the shielded areas? I asked. Not for long, Homage answered, and I don't think that would do much good. If that balefire bomb goes off, it'll take out the foundation and everything not protected. All the shielding in Equestria won't save us from the fall. Glumly, she admitted. The shields were designed to protect the whole building. Haven't worked since the first one. I know, I told her, recounting how a wrong turn in the basement had brought me to a room full of generators. I didn't mention the maintenance pony who had died from shrapnel when the mega spell overloaded them and they all exploded. Another realization struck me. Rene is researching a way to trick a bypass, I warned her. If these shields were being used to house the most vital research of at least one of the ministries, what could he be after? Was it here? He hadn't had much success, yes, but he's got ponies working on it. Homage frowned. Not good. She hopped down from the fountain. Thank you for the warning, little Pip. 
she approached me. Problem is, there was already a way to find out, or to trick a bypass. Right. I nodded. The bypass works on genetics, and it's not as accurate as the Ministry of Arcane Science has thought. Close family members of the designated ponies, or even a direct descendant of them, can get through the bypass. That's how I can get in here, even if the shields are up. Homage looked back to the Alicorn, and then to me. The shields in Tempony Tower were set to allow only Twilight Sparkle and the three highest ranking unicorns in the Manhattan MAS hub to pass through. It turns out, I'm a direct descendant of one of those higher ranking unicorns, she revealed to me. Just like the ponies who actually control Tempony Tower. That's why they want me here, Homage added cash cautiously, as long as I don't have too many waves. Oh. Oh, wow. I'll admit, I've been talking you up a lot, and I think I'm finally getting the others to come around. It won't be long before I can put the special resources of this tower at your hooves. Homage smiled sweetly. Let me give you the extended tour. Shield spells had only been the start. Homage guided me through one concealed hallway and shielded chamber after another, turning off the shields for me and restoring them in our wake. We walked into a large, multicolored ritual chamber, bleached brightest white walls. The floor was an intricate mosaic of white-on-white -white tiles in exquisite and arcane patterns. There was a mirrored chimney leading to a skylight looking up into the darkness of the clouds above. What is this? This, Homage revealed, is a mega spell chamber. I stumbled. W wait, you can cast mega spells here? Homage giggled. Yes and no. You can cast specific mega spells here. If you had enough unicorns who wanted the spell, each mega spell chamber is key to a specific spell, apparently. I nodded, my mouth suddenly dry. How many mega spell chambers does Ten Pony Tower have? Just this one, Hobbit admitted sadly, and it's useless. Useless? Hobbit moved over to the one chamber's uh, 32 corners. She floated up the audio machine. I found this in the recording studio. Apparently, it never got around to editing. Homage started the machine, and hauntingly peaceful music flowed out, plunked and strummed from a deep-sounding harp. I closed my eyes and found myself swaying in the music. It was mysterious, unlike anything I had heard before. I try to pull this out once a year for a late-night broadcast. I love it, but it's totally not DJ Pwn3. I nodded, wanting her to shut up. I was enjoying the music. It was speaking to me, Talk, uh, touching on the sorrows of the last week, but without making me hurt. The music ended in a rippling wave of sound that slowly reverberated away. I heard a voice from the recording, sounding like somebody speaking through the recording studio's intercom. That was beautiful Lyra. Next, let's try. But an argument in the background, at first almost too quiet to hear, was quickly getting louder. From inside the recording chamber, the voice of a mare, who I assumed to be Lyra, spoke up. What's going on? Um, you didn't hear this from me, but Twilight Sparkle's gone the last three days without sleep, trying to prepare for the princess's inspection, and has been in supremely bitchy mood all day today. I suggest steering clear. Don't worry, I don't think she'll come in here. The arguing voices outside the recording studio were getting loud enough and close enough to just make out the words. Well, that's just great, Twilight. Now she's in the bathroom, sobbing her eyes out. Well, I'm sorry, but those are the results, and they're just un unacceptable. I can't go to the princess and tell her that we've put her name on a mega spell that's... that's useless. The ponies in the recording studio 
had fallen completely silent. The argument was just outside their door. Twilight Sparkle had a... Twilight Sparkle and a male voice that sounded vaguely familiar. There's better ways of handling it than by grabbing a pony, pointing, and saying, Look, there are all the thousands and thousands of bodies of ponies who are dead because your spell sucks. Explain it to them. It's how the hell was that supposed to help? Don't you get it, Spike? The zebras have mega spell tipped missiles. Hundreds of them. If they launch them, those missiles will reach Equestria from the zebra homeland within minutes. And this Celestia one, or Celestia Prime, or whatever they're calling it, can't even be cast unless it's sunny. I can't tell the princess that the only defense we have against those missiles can be def can, can be defeated on a cloudy day. What if the zebras decide to attack us at night? You know what? Forget it, Twilight. I want to go take a nap. And frankly, you should too. You're always taking a nap. There's work to be done. Whatever. Wake me when the Twilight I know and love has decided to come to visit. Until then, I don't even want to speak to you. Ugh, fine. In here, Homage said, waving a hoof at a sprawling architectural bay. We discovered that the Ministry of Arcane Sciences had perfected spells that purified water, cleaned radiation, even purged the taint. I boggled. If only that maddened ghoul doctor had known what he killed so many to accomplish. Unfortunately, Howard informed me, the spell only works at an extremely small scale, with a lot of effort. We could purge one tree, the fruit becoming ripe and succulent and perfect for human or perfect for consumption, but there's nothing to keep the poisonous and taint from just seeping back in. And the area affected is so small, it would take an army of unicorns to clean enough for the field to grow a garden without having to worry about the soil going bad before harvest. But it makes for wonderful potted plants. But if you could cast it everywhere, all at once, purge everything, I realized what I was seeing were the components of the gardens of Equestria. I'd say you're delusional, but I'm talking to my little Pip. I know better. It was time to tell her. When I was done, how much collapsed weakly? Me? She looked at me, as if pleading me to renounce the truth. The salvation of all Equestria is on me? I nodded. You, did see do, for others. We don't know who yet. This spell, it will fix everything. Pretty much, I nodded. But there's things that need to be done first. I'm not the Wasteland Savior, Homage. You are. You and them. I gave her a bittersweet smile. I'm just the one who clears the way. Homage stared at me for a long time. Then push yourself up. I need a drink. Screw my mother, and screw my vulnerability to addictions. We were back in the Anatheum, and Homage was drowning herself in apple whiskey, and I was right there beside her. Sues to the... whatever it is ponies get sues to. And then, Homage slurred, continuing a tale that had blurred into another tale, which had jumped off from the original story about four stories back. Joke Blue says, Big deal! You got one box that's bigger inside than outside. Well, Mr. Hooves, you've got... I mean, I've got four little saddlebags, and I can carry about 30 rifles in them, and more ammo than you can shake a hoof at. Hell, you should see how many rakes I can cram into my cool box back home. Homage thumped down the apple whiskey bottle on the table for emphasis. I paused, waving my hooves as I tried to measure my imagination. I was drunk, and probably missing something, because there was no way a rake could fit in a toolbox. I finally gave up, deciding it must just be a joke. Joke Blue's a funny name. How'd she get that? How much became more sober, although no more sober? Birth defect, 
Her mother was hit by killing joke while pregnant. Lucky, either of them lived. Ah, I said. Not really understanding, but reaching out a comforting hoof anyway. It seems the right thing to do, even though I ended up knocking over several of the apple whiskey bottles. Fortunately, most of them were empty. A memory struck me, and I began to cry. Little Pip? What's the matter? And with a shuddered breath, I recounted. With a shuddering breath, I recounted. I shot one of the Steel Rangers in the back of the head. I think it was the one who killed my old mentor, but I'm not sure. Well, sounds like the bitch deserved it. Sounds like all the Steel Rangers did. Yes, I know. But I just snuck up on her and shot her and kept shooting, even after she was dead, until I'd emptied little Macintosh into her corpse. My breast heaved with a shudder. I... I don't like the pony I'm becoming. I think I'm losing myself. My voice hitched. Monteri Jack was right. I'm running out of me left to save. How much was by my side? I didn't remember her leaving her chair. For the second time that night, she held me as I began to cry. She gently led me towards her bed. Come here, little Pip. Rest now. 